and welcome to Culture here on I-24 News. I'm Ted Grober and we have a wonderful show for you today. We'll talk about the state of the music industry in the digital age with the author of a new book on the subject. We'll hear a blind orchestra from Thailand. And we'll take a look at TV shows back from the dead. But first, Sotheby's, the 270-year-old auction house, launched yesterday together with eBay, a new online bidding platform. While well, bidding online has been available on the Sotheby's website for quite some time, now this cooperation with eBay aims to open up the field to eBay's 155 million active users. Visitors to the site will be able to browse upcoming sales and, of course, bid during actual sales. The first First Sotheby's auctions to be featured on eBay will be a photography sale on April 1st with works by Ansel Adams, Man Ray, Diane Arbus, Richard Avedon, Vic Munitz and many more, followed by a sale focusing on New York City that will include some special items such as the 1970s Yankee Stadium sign expected to bring in between $300,000 and $600,000. It'll be interesting to see how many people will feel comfortable buying through Sotheby's on eBay, especially considering that right now Sotheby's seller score on the site is zero. The crisis in the music industry as, uh, is at uh, this point a well-documented story and one that exemplifies the changes in the way we consume culture in the digital age. French journalist Benjamin Petroville is publishing a new book on the subject titled They Killed My CD and he's uh, here in the studio to tell us about it. Thanks for coming in, Benjamin. Thank you. So get us up to date. What happened in the last decade or so uh, uh, to this point? There is one word to sum up all this, what happened this year, MP3. MP3, MP3. yeah. MP3. It began with MP3. All the musical, the recording industry didn't understand that with MP3, all the world, the world of the record would change. Yeah. Never, nothing will be like before. We have to remember that during one century, an entire century, all the vinyl record after mm -hmm. the, the CD record was uh, a big success for all the people who lived the artists, of course, but also with uh, all the recording industry mm -hmm. and with the MP3, it's, the end was very serious and in the very short period. Yeah, it, 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 it collapsed r overnight, it seemed. 1999, yeah. it was the end of the uh, record industry. Yeah. It means that during 10 years, they tried to find a way to sell music, to sell record. They tried with the MP3 legal, mm -hmm. like with iTunes, mm -hmm. with Apple. Mm -hmm. And as we see today, it's over. It's also over because yeah. there is a new way to sell music now. It's the streaming, the streaming and right. we hope maybe that it can be a way to sell music. Well, we'll see about that in just a second, but let's let's talk about the formats of, of past. Are, are people still listening to, uh, you know, physical media, to CDs, to vinyl, which is making some sort of comeback? Um, the, vinyl, the comeback of the, 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 the vinyl is a very interesting thing. It means that people love to have this music, to touch yeah. the music. There's something nostalgic about it. Exactly, though. exactly. The vinyl is a very short part mm -hmm. of the market. It's more than one and a half percent, no more. But it's a symbol, it's a, it's a symbol that record is not only a, a consumer product, it's also a, a cultural product. Right, right. So, but. I mean, we're seeing CDs. I just moved, for instance. I moved to a new apartment. I took all of my CDs, and I was like, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know exactly. where to put it, if I should even keep it. Are people buying CDs? Uh, you have to keep it. Because, first of all, the CD, it's the most, the biggest part of the market. All the people say that he, he's dead, the CD yeah. is dead. It's not the reality. It's 70% of the market today. Wow. It's a lot. That's crazy. So, but we know that it's not the future. Yeah. It's not. It's not the future. But remember, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. when all the people said that vinyl is dead, you and can watch that around. today. Yeah. Vinyl yeah. is still alive. So all you see is you have to take them to put on the side and open the box 
uh, maybe in 10 or 20 years. All right, I'll keep them, uh, I'll keep them for now. Uh, now, this isn't happening just in the music industry. I mean, it happened very fast in the music industry, but it's it happening in uh, TV, uh, films, uh, uh, Books, journalism, of course. Press also. Uh, I think that the uh, recording industry was the, the guinea pig yeah. of this revolution. Yeah. Really, the guinea pig, because it happened to the music industry, and remember all the press, the journalists said, oh, look, they don't know what is internet, they don't understand that this is a revolution. And now, as you see, press can't live yeah. with this revolution. Yeah. Press and also books, also cinema, movies, and uh, it means that before every all cultural products and cultural industry, uh, the recording industry was the first one, yeah. and maybe will be the first to to, to live find to find the solution. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about streaming, which is what's the hot thing right now. Mm. Is there a, a, a viable model for streaming? I think that it can be a solution. Uh, it can be a way, but we have to wait a little bit because it's new streaming. Yeah. Streaming, people can live with streaming only if you and me, we subscribe to a streaming, uh, for example, Deezer, for example, Spotify yeah. in the United States, uh, Pandora also, it's mm -hmm. a way to listen mm -hmm. to music. There are many artists like Taylor Swift who don't want to be on Spotify. Now, I right, can understand what, them. Why? Why is that? A lot of artists are speaking yeah. against streaming. Yes. Why is that? because they get a, a very small part of this market. <laughs> that the, the reason, because they don't earn a lot of money, but I think that there is no uh, equal parts in the division. Yeah. But it can be, we have to let time to go to people to understand what is this new model. And uh, I'm sure that maybe in five years, it can give many, much money. Just an example, when you buy a CD, mm -hmm. you pay 15 euros, or euros for a CD, okay. but you pay, it, you pay it only once. Right. It means that in 10 years, 20 years, if I you still want, own it. You own it, but the singer doesn't get money for this. Again. Right. If you pay for Spotify of Deezer, okay, he will have a, a, a short a part. Uh, yes, oh, 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 something. But if you listen in again, one year, again, 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 it will make them a lot, lot, lot of money, much more done with the CD. I see. So we need some patience. Um, exactly. I'm sure that uh, people in the music industry have no problem with that. Very patient people. Uh, Benjamin, thanks so we much for music, coming. We music, that's the most important. That is the most important. Still with music in Thailand, children perform in the country's first blind orchestra. It's a new ray of hope for the blind community in the country where it's believed that the disabled are suffering for their misdeeds in a previous life. More in this report. Learning melodies via braille is no easy matter. But music teacher Alonko Chukao has invented a system for doing just that. He was inspired by these young music lovers, all of whom are visually impaired, to set up the Thai Blind Orchestra nine months ago. He believes it's the first of its kind in Thailand. To begin the project, Alonko and other teachers play different instruments to the children and encourage them to walk towards the sound of their favorite. But once they had got the taste for music, there remains the stiffer challenge of teaching them how to play. We teach the kids one-on-one, -on -one, showing them how to hold the instruments in the right pose. That was one of the hard parts in teaching blind children, as we can't demonstrate in the same way we would for sighted people. But the hard work is starting to pay off, with the group recently playing a concert at an elephant conservation center at a national park. At first, it was really hard for me that I wanted to stop. But when I realized that others can do it, I gave it another try. Also, there were no other bands like this before, so I picked myself up again. Away from the stage, Joe and the rest of the group also face daunting challenges within wider society, not least because of religious beliefs, which suggest that people with disabilities are paying for misdeeds committed in past lives. One of the, the very strong... Uh, believe 
is about karma. So what you have done in the past will manifest itself in the future. So it is almost um, the same as you reap what you sow. More than 1.8 million disabled people live in Thailand, around a tenth of them blind. Activists say most are denied basic rights and considered second-class citizens, preventing them from participating fully in society. The belief in karma makes disabled people think they should just surrender, stay at home and accept their fate. Many families with disabled relatives do nothing to encourage them. But for these budding Mozart, at least, disability has proved no barrier to embracing the present and living life to the full. In a moment, we'll hear of some resurrected TV shows. But first, our cultural recommendation for the day. Different Together is an artistic educational project based on coexistence, aimed at implementing values of equality, tolerance, recognition of other cultures and ethnicities. The Israeli project is an extension of the Embracing Our Differences initiative, which was founded a decade ago in Sarasota, Florida. This is the very first year of Different Together in Israel, with the support of the Jewish Federation of Sarasota, Manati, Florida, which raised the funds to finance the project. 20 schools throughout Tel Aviv Yafo and its surroundings have participated in the project and submitted hundreds of artworks made by elementary and high school students. The judging panel, selected by the best artworks that were enlarged to billboard size, are now being presented at the outdoor exhibit in Jaffa Port. Different Together outdoor exhibit Jaffa Port is on display until April 11. Avril Zentzvi is already in the studio to talk about, uh, what are you going to talk about? I'm talking about uh, <laughs> TV shows that are back from the dead, but it's a bit of a pun, you'll see later. They're back from the dead? Okay. We'll start with um, uh, Community, which is returning to season six on uh, Yahoo. This show was on NBC. How many different... Uh, yeah, NBC and then... No, it was on NBC. Just NBC and yeah. Yahoo? You're thinking about... You're thinking about... There was a lot of upheaval in this show because after three seasons, uh, Dan Harmon, the creator of the show, was ousted and there were other showrunners. And okay. then after a season... When it was, it was run by other people, no? no, he was returned. He, he, it it he was, was rumored to be. He was okay. brought back. Um, the show is on the brink of cancellation. Was on the brink of cancellation every season, almost every episode. It's a very quirky, nerdy, self-referential show, um, and it was never high in the rating. But what it had was a very vocal group of supporters, of fans, and we know that in this day and age... That's enough. It, it helps. I mean, uh, <laughs> we've seen enough uh, We've seen enough examples like uh, Family Guy, which returned right. after being sold on DVD very well. We've seen Arrested Development, which went to Netflix. Uh, we've seen right now uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt was a show so that what, was not... It, it, it's, it's coming to Yahoo, but it's going to be funded by a Kickstarter campaign. Something like that, I'm no, sure. No, it's coming to Yahoo. Yahoo pay for it, paid for it. This is their first like major series um there has been a, a little changes in the cast chevy so that chase doesn't left say very good things about yahoo the fact that their first major series is the sixth season of a show that's already kind of well, failed on uh, it, it don't say failed <laughs> i love community don't say failed all right it's if a really happy, good show it's a really good show and when the reviews are back? saying it came back yesterday, okay. and the reviews are saying that it's uh, sort of back to its very quirky self from the beginning. All right. Okay, so Community's back. I can live with that. What else yeah. you got? Now we're moving to another new show, which premiered this week, to good reviews, iZombie. 
Um, it's the latest Apple uh, feature. No, and uh, it wasn't really resurrected. It was sort of playing on words right. because the the star of the show, the main character, is resurrected. She's a zombie. Um, it's based on a really fun comic book by Chris Robertson and Mike Allred. And... Uh, She's going to eat the brains. Of course she's going to eat the brains. Well, it's a sort of twist on a zombie story because it's about a medical student which turned into a zombie. And now when she eats brains, she sort of gets psychic uh, notions from the person that she ate. So she starts helping solving crime oh. of the murdered people. So it's sort of a zombie show slash procedural. Um, it's being uh, made for, the for TV by Rob Thomas, who himself is not... Uh, unfamiliar with uh, resurrected shows because he brought back Veronica, Veronica Mars, Mars via so Kickstarter. Kind of, yeah. yeah, it all connects. It all comes back. Avi, thanks so much. Thank you. That's it from us for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another show. So please join us again. <laughs>